Welcome to Birmingham and to the IAAF EDF Energy World Half Marathon Championships. Well, it's the 18th championship. Once again, the support for the event is impressive. 39 nations are taking part. Well, I said uh, welcome to Birmingham. It's uh, what about Birmingham. It's a worthy host of these championships, incidentally. It's a regional capital of the West Midlands and the second largest city in the United Kingdom. Population, about a million. Developed into a national commercial centre these days, a big change from when it played a significant role in England's Industrial Revolution. It's a shopper's paradise. It's four department stores, modern malls, markets, boutiques. It's a centre of tourism and, of course, uh, sport, having hosted in recent years the World Indoor Athletics Championships and the European Indoor Athletics Championships. And what about those uh, Ashes matches or that Ashes uh, Ashes? match of cricket at Edgebaston and with a museum, art gallery, many buildings of architectural note as well as the modern. The city is very special and it offers so much. Birmingham certainly is passionate about its sport. Such modernization along the rivers and uh, the long boats there for us to see. It's a magnificent uh, architectural presence but uh, the start and finish in this region and of course the course starts on Cambridge Street near Paradise Forum here the route continues along a short sharp descent uh, down the hill before making its way to the market area of the city it then turns into Pershaw Road heading towards a lap of uh, Cannon Hill Park we've got a shot of Cannon Hill Park for you um, just uh, just looking over that uh, part of the course, we'll come back at the moment. You can see the weather conditions at the moment, it's quarter to nine, 11 degrees centigrade. It's, uh, it has been splattering with rain. Uh, the cloud cover is pretty high though at this stage. And uh, we hope that the conditions, there's not a lot of wind about, so we're hoping that the conditions will be favorable. The course itself uh, was, uh, it's a very windy course. And uh, I mentioned Cannon Hill Park, and uh, there it is, it's absolutely beautiful in this park. The route goes through the park, and that park is at around about uh, five kilometers, just beyond the three mile mark. Lots of uh, concerts here in the summer. Just looking across the beautiful lake. Leaves the park, continues along Pershaw Road, ends up in Bourneville and uh, Selly Oak before rejoining the Pershaw Road, heading back towards the city. The race continues into Hinkley Street, turning into Hill Street. There's a sharp incline. Navigation Street, Holiday Street, Granville Street, back to Centenary Square. Beautiful scene, isn't it? A little while ago, we had the opening ceremony and uh, the championship got underway with this ceremony. Local children, incidentally, from the age of 7 to 17, flying the flags of the nations. There are 39 nations taking part. And, of course, uh, lots and lots of uh, celebrities taking part. Flags of all the nations. You'll we'll probably hear the introductions in the background there from the announcer on course. I know that uh, Kelly Holmes is here. I know that Lord Coe is here. And Lord Coe, who is uh, an IAAF Vice President, is due to speak. He'll be accompanied by Steve Hollingsworth, the local organising committee chairman. The Assistant Director for Sport and Events here in Birmingham, Birmingham and City Council. British flag being carried in. welcome you to the IAAF EDF Energy World Half Marathon Championships and immediately thank the professionalism of our 
local students from local schools who carried out an amazing opening ceremony for us. Well, it's a, a 24 nation, a 26 nation a turnout for the women here. And uh, we'll have a look at uh, the start list in a moment. Uh, looking at one uh, competitor from China there, the Eritreans, Zergish. So the Eritreans who will be well represented, the men not so well represented here. There's the British uh, team. Top three to uh, count, of course, Kabeda and Tufa will all be featuring. There's the Japanese team, the long distance running that uh, the Japanese so enjoy will be represented here. The Kenyan quartet, absolutely superb. Katani, the third one down, is the fastest in the field, but uh, they really do have a talented team. Rosa of Portugal is here. So is Kimberly Smith of New Zealand. We shall see her featuring, as she did in the World Cross Country Championship. South African uh, squad is good, too, and so are the Russians. Abitova is there. We've seen much of her on the track. Uh, the American uh, team at the bottom. Berla and Dreyer and Hastings. And there's the completion of the American team and one athlete from Zambia. So we'll have a look at the uh, men's team in a moment if we can. Let's um, we'll get a closer look at those athletes uh, shortly. But, uh, but of course we've got a uh, very fine lineup indeed for the men. There are 34 teams competing. Strong team from Botswana. Jeff Hunt representing Australia. The Brazilians are here. Dos Santos, who may well feature, has been in the top ten. Last uh, cha two championships, incidentally. Costa Ricans are there. The Eritreans with Tedesi. Um, he's the man, of course, going for his fourth title. They are very strong individually. The team, not quite so sure. Ethiopians, McConnan, Tesfaye, always strong. And uh, the French team there, and the British team Jones, Lemoncello, Miles, Raven, and uh, Phil Wicks. The Italians are here, a couple of Irish athletes in McAllister and Murray. Japanese in full strength, both in the men and in the women. And the Kenyans, absolutely superb. Four men under 60 minutes and with top three to count well. They're very much the, the Moroccans there too, so give them a mention, they'll feature as well. And the Peru, from Peru, the Mexicans. South Africans, they're, they're going well, we're told. Just looking across the Tanzanians. And the African dominance may well continue here in these championships. And there's the American, uh, or part of the American team, because we've got one more. Uh, Dathan Ritzenheim, the United States, we understand he's in very, very good form indeed. And no doubt we'll catch up with him in the race. Well, Mark Butler alongside me. Um, we may get a close look at uh, some of these teams as they line up at the start, uh, but certainly the uh, Ethiopians and the Kenyans will do well. Well, I think this is a very important event for the Ethiopian women, having uh, not won a gold medal at the World Championships in Berlin. And the lady in red there at the beginning is Tufa, Mestowet Tufa, who probably is the best of the Ethiopians here. Well, the Kenyans, Mark, I mentioned uh, earlier how strong they are, but uh, really, as a team, um, with, the, with the Ethiopians winning last uh, time, surprisingly, the Kenyans have come here in magnificent strength. Well, yes, and then Mary Kaitani uh, would be the number one Kenyan. She's done 67 minutes this year, and I'm sure the Kenyans and Ethiopians will be watching one another very closely in this race. Well, Smith, the New Zealander, who just caught the back of her there as uh, she was warming up. There is the Kenyan uh, team. Patani is certainly very, very strong indeed. Look at this. Well, Katani was the silver medalist in the 2007 uh, World Half Marathon Championships. Uh, she's had a baby since then, and she seems to have come back even stronger because 
she's almost uh, running as quickly uh, this year in a smaller race as she did last year in, in 2007 at the World Championships. Well, the Eritrean men, and there's the man in the middle at the front, uh, Tedese, who has won this title for the last three times, throughout three years, going for a fourth, an unprecedented fourth win. I mean, he's such an athlete, winning uh, medals on the country, on the track, and on the road. He's the complete athlete. We shall see much of him. The men's race starts at around 9.30. Well supported by the rest of the team. He's such a talent. I remember him winning the World Cross Country Mombasa in that steaming heat. The, uh, we've got the Russian women there. Oh, that's the American team. That's the American team. Mark, um, what about them? And the Russians coming in. But the Americans, uh, Mark, and the Russians. Um, to challenge the Africans? Well, if anybody is going to get in amongst the Ethiopians and the Kenyans, I think it will be either Russia. Uh, you can see Inga Abitova there in the headband, who's the European champion at 10,000 metres, or indeed the United States, who've got some very good people, particularly Amy Yoda Begley, I'd go out, look out for, who was sixth in the 10,000 metres in Berlin. Hello, Smith on the left, New Zealander, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, she was 13th, if I remember, in the, long, in the World Cross Country, led the race for a good while, put real pressure on the Africans, and we thought, well, this is a, a real commitment. Look at this uh, shot from the start. The elite races, or the women's race, just, what, three or four minutes, three minutes or so away. And uh, we expect it to be a good race, this. No Paula Radcliffe here and, uh, and of course uh, the Lorna Kiplagat who a uh, former Kenyan who represented the Netherlands uh, three times winner as well and uh, you know we we expected uh, them to put a really good fight on here but unfortunately they're both of them Kiplagat and uh, Paula Radcliffe uh, not here Radcliffe has got um, tonsillitis we understand and Kip Kiplagat is has got, got a knee hasn't that's she? correct yes in athletics, we are showing boards with time to go, and that's three minutes away now. The athletes are assembled around about 20 metres back from the start line. In just a moment, they'll be brought forward and we'll introduce four or five of the very biggest names from this uh, lineup from around the world. Every continent represented some of the greatest athletes that you've seen in action in Beijing and in the Berlin. IWF World you can just hear in the background the announcer, the and we're going to get an introduction IWF of one or two of the elite athletes here. And the final one in Britain until the London Olympic Games of 2012. Elite athletes. The elite women now lining up at the start of this uh, journey of 21 kilometers, 13.1 miles. And of course, we have a very, very strong so lineup the from uh, forward to the start line. Let's uh, Ethiopia. You see the Ethiopians in their familiar green and red, also the Kenyans. And there'll be a real battle on there, I would think. It's a windy course. It's a very, very windy course indeed. Behind the line. Well, there's a oh, gosh, toe behind the line being requested. <laughs> so away they go. Let's give them a great send off. So it'll be an the interesting start to this uh, race indeed. But as they get away, well, let me just say cool to you that uh, the, the story of the Tracking. women's event is so different from the, the men's. The European the athletes have won the event nine times so the last time the in 2005, which was the uh, for Romania, the winner on that occasion, the Olympic champion, of course, uh, from um, Beijing last year, Constantina Dita. And Africa have won the last two, Ethiopia, the defending champions. It was a bit of a surprise win that. But Lorna Kiplagat, the former Kenya, Kenyan representing the Netherlands, well, she's won the last three championships. And uh, 
she has a significant knee injury and, and doesn't go and pull a Radcliffe with that tonsillitis. Such a disappointment for her. She's a three-time winner too, last win back in 2003. And uh, then Mary Kepchos, Kepkoskai Katani of Kenya, the fastest in the field. And you can see now that the Kenyans are really taking this on uh, right from the start. It's going to be one of those races where we're going to see this downhill part mark at the beginning is very, very fast indeed. But the course itself has got an awful lot of bends and twists, uh, particularly a little bit later on when they go through the parks and then back out down uh, Pershaw Road. Yes, the technical delegate yesterday said he thought this was a course where fast times could be run. And in the lead at the moment is Caroline Chepchenui Kalel of Kenya, who seems to be wishing to set a fast pace. Uh, she's, in the, she's wearing the red shoes and the, the yellow shoes to her one side is, is Mary Katani, who's the race favourite. Yes, it uh, will be very much a team effort and all of a sudden Africa, the uh, defending champions in the green and the red, the fastest uh, team in the field on the right and already there's a little bit of a gap opening up here. Um, Smith of New Zealand, as always, making a real commitment to stay with them. But look at this, Mark. I mean, this is, I suppose, going pretty well with the form book. But certainly Africa. And there's a gap now of 10 metres or so. And the two teams that we expected uh, to be featuring, of course, are featuring at the moment. It's early days indeed. There's the Russian that we featured, featured earlier on just at the back of that uh, leading group but this leading group is absolutely flying and in the chasing group there we saw Amy Yoda Begley who's possibly going to be the top American with the Olympic rings tattoo on her leg uh, not going off quite as quickly as the Kenyans and Ethiopians and I think there's an Eritrean there at the back of the pack or the Eritrea yes it's interesting that the Eritreans have got they've got one a competitor in this race whereas the men have got a full team it's first three to score and it's not the positions that count they add the times together and it is the lowest time that actually uh, scores Katani the slighter figure on the right of the shot Tufa is the leading Ethiopian on the left and Tufa a very experienced uh, athlete indeed as you can see, Halel. Well, it looks as though they're going out for the team, the team race, that's for sure. I mean, there are two teams here. They'll have sized each other up, and they will have uh, really gone for this. Gelan of Ethiopia, the tall figure towards the back of that uh, Ethiopian pack at the front. But the course evens out, but then eventually there's, uh, eventually there'll be some very, very tight bends, and that may well take its toll. Well, there you've got the one of the Kenyans is, uh, is Anga, Angori. It is the was eighth in the World 10,000 Meter Championship back in Osaka, and uh, she's got a best of uh, 67.50 this year. So I just wonder. She looks as though she might well be trying to get back into this because the start has been pretty quick. The kilometer markers are out on the course, and there are mile markers, but we'll see which uh, we can give you information on as they go round. We'll certainly get a 5K and a 10K time, which will give us some uh, assessment of the of the overall uh, potential time. Kebeda in the middle of that uh, group there, alongside Tufa. Katani now the fastest in the world this year. She was uh, second behind Kiplagat last time, and her best is sub-67, so she really is a talented athlete. And the taller uh, woman in the middle of the table with a very big hair is a very interesting competitor uh, that's Abebu Gelan who actually is a junior she's only 19 and she was sixth in the world uh, in this equivalent race in 2008 uh, so it's great to see a junior athlete being able to keep up with the, the, the very fast pace that's being set here just looking at the uh, chase impact, there's Smith there. And he was saying the Americans, as a team, will need to uh, 
get closed in on this. Uh, this is a big, big uh, lead, uh, Mark, in the early stages of this uh, race. This, uh, I didn't know how quick this would be, in fact, but uh, certainly I have a feeling it is going to be quick. Smith, on the right of the shot, led the World Cross Country this last time. By, and there's two, two kilometres uh, gone there, just, uh, just inside uh, six minutes for the two-kilometre mark for the women. So what does that give us, Mark? Actually, it's quite quick. I think this is more or less world best pace. It is indeed. I was just looking down at the, as you were saying that, Mark, it's, it's inside 67 minute pace. So this is pretty, pretty quick. And, and I would think that they're going to have a real go at this. It's relatively flat. There's a big hill, um, I have to say, around about nine miles between kilometre 14 and 15 on uh, Bournebrook Road, which uh, will take a bit of uh, a challenge later on. But uh, Catani quite happy just to sit there and I have to say the they look very very comfortable but where hang on the just looking at the oh yes I was just wondering where the rest of the Kenyans are they I just wondered whether they dropped off the back one or two of them but the Ethiopians looking very very good indeed with Tufa Estuette Tufa she was second in the world cross country championships when they were in Edinburgh in 2008 it's not done too much since then but the main thing she has done is almost break the world record for 15 kilometers on the road that was last year and so we know that she is possibly uh, at happiest on the road surfaces really made an impression on the track yeah she had difficulty in qualifying for the world cross country this year I mean as you say last year she did uh, well but, but nevertheless she is a class athlete, absolutely, and uh, African Games champion uh, over 10,000 metres in 2007. So, you know, she's a championship athlete on the track, as so many of these athletes are on the track, both on the track and on the country. And for some, it transfers and translates very well indeed. Katani then, that is a big, big lead. And when you have a field as big as it was, the field split up so very, very quickly. I guess when you've got athletes of running 73 and 74 of uh, personal bests, and these athletes are running, uh, you know, 67, 68, then you're going to expect this, I guess. Uh, but certainly the the Kenyans have got uh, what four under 69, um, and they've got two under 60 eight minutes for this course so and there is the fastest woman in the world this season over the half marathon Kenyan record holder at this event ran her first half marathon incidentally in December 2006 world silver medalist the following October so you know this is a real talent look at her best 66.48 they're settling in very very nicely indeed Well, 9.05 at three kilometres, if that marker is correct, is a, is a phenomenal pace. It's, well, certainly inside Paula Radcliffe's world best, let alone the official world record. But we almost don't need to see splits to know that they're going so quickly when the athletes uh, of the quality of the ones that you see in front of you now are so far behind. Well, you can see now that uh, that group is spreading quite nicely. And there are lots of separate races going on at the moment in this uh, world half marathon. Just over 10 minutes gone. 13.1 miles, 21 kilometers, the race journey. And so many of the athletes now, apart from that uh, lead group, are um, just spread up and one or two are dropping off the back. I'm not surprised with the pace as it is. And Katani, who knows that she can run six, sub 67, just looking at um, that was uh, Ayanu, I think, of Ethiopia, who's uh, there on at the back of that field. There she is. 
that looks like uh, worker to a Yanu 22 the best of 75 coming into this well I have to say that uh, it's spreading out splitting up absolutely magnificent Gelan uh, the youngster that you mentioned uh, certainly being uh, dropped off at this particular point and Katani looks so easy doesn't she Kebeda is there Tuffer is there well, it's three and two. The Kenyans certainly have the team event at the moment if, uh, if it stays like this because the Ethiopians are down to two and the Kenyans down to three and could all down to Katani, who is uh, pushing this very, very hard indeed. And to lose everyone in the first two kilometres, uh, well, it had to be a, a terrific pace, and it is. But I just wonder how much, Mark, the windy latter part of the course will take out of them, particularly when they come down um, to, uh, what, between four and five kilometres, approaching the, the Cannon Hill Park. They go round the park once, and uh, there are lots of uh, tight, tight bends. And as you know, uh, Stuart, once they get back onto the long section on Pershaw Road, then the chasing athletes will have those in, in front of them in their sights, and that perhaps might be whether a few changes of position will occur. But it does seem as if the Kenyan tactic is to burn off the opposition, and it seems to be working so far. You've got three Kenyans in the leading group there. And Phyllis Ngori, who didn't appear to follow that initial very fast pace, has worked her way through and is now certainly in touch with his uh, leading few. Kaitan is leading, and the other two Kenyans in that group are Penina Arusi and uh, Caroline Chep Cheptunui Kalel. Yes, Arusi, three times winner of the Berlin 25 kilometer race, so she's got pretty good uh, strength endurance. Sixth in the Kenyan World Trials over 5,000 meters, we're told, for this year's uh, championship in uh, Berlin. She's uh, Prolific uh, 25k runner, winning the Berlin race in three times. The second uh, in 2007, didn't compete last year. She was 18th in the Olympic 10,000 metres in Beijing. So 10,000, just uh, she's a sub 31 10,000 metre runner. But uh, really, Katani is uh, just now motoring to such a level that uh, the rest of this field, talented though they may be, are finding it very, very tough indeed. And I just wonder what will unfold here with several of the athletes who are going uh, faster than they've ever gone before here. And it may well, I just wonder how far ahead of the trailing group they are because certainly the if, if they suffer, as they may well suffer, with this pace, which is, well, it's got to be around about 66, isn't it, Mark? It's, uh, it's very, very quick. Yes, I had them in the 65s or thereabouts, which is, is almost suicidally quick. And it's interesting to know that the, the, these, these are different sets of athletes to those that we would have seen at the World Championships in Berlin. There's no De Barbara, no De Far for Ethiopia. Uh, but they are the best in the world at the road discipline. And you are looking at Mary Katani, who by some margin is the quickest woman in the world this year. Well, Kabeda running very, very strongly indeed. And uh, looks to be leading the Ethiopian charge, doesn't she? She's 20, got a best of 68.43 set this season. The park, which is ahead. That will be, they'll enter the park at just around three miles. There they are, they're in it now, so... Um, Three miles, five kilometers gone. They're between five and six kilometers now. They'll turn around the end of the park and then proceed up Queen's Ride. And then they'll be have uh, Edgebaston uh, Cricket Club in front of them. I'm just looking at the the way in which they line up. I think those times are a little bit suspect. I can see that uh, there are several off the leading two. Obviously, they're going to be slightly out of date as they go through the the park. It's uh, 
five kilometers. Uh, that's what do we predict at uh, at five kilometers then, Mark? Fifteen seventeen equates to something in the <laughs> sixty-four minutes. So. Uh, it is a lot quicker than certainly we were expecting. 64 and a half or there or thereabouts. Well, we knew that Catani was in very, very good form indeed, setting that uh, best time this season, but uh, this is a real attempt to set her personal best. And uh, Gabeda is the only one to go with her at the moment. I'd, and I must say that Gabeda looks very, very comfortable indeed. Doesn't uh, doesn't look uncomfortable, but the but the aggression in the running of Katani is, is is absolutely surprising. I mean, there's such aggression. We have seen this before. She's she was the one who attempted to stay with uh, the great Lorna Kiplagat at uh, previous editions of the World Half Marathon Championships. Kabeda is an interesting athlete. She's the one who was all set to run in the World Championships in Berlin at 10,000 meters. And then Messeret Defar came to, Bur to Birmingham, in fact, and ran a very fast time at the British Championships. And uh, she took the space, the vacant space, on the Ethiopian team. Well, 65... They're, they're, well, Kabeda is running three minutes faster than she's ever run before on the projection. This pace is relentless. Sub 65 minute running is world record pace. It's difficult to say world record, world best because the courses are so different. And uh, look at Katani, she's saying, come on, take a little bit of a lead to Kabeda. She's saying, I've led all the way, come on, do your bit. And uh, I'm not sure that's gonna happen. I don't know whether they know each other, but uh, certainly Katani was asking there for her to come through. And how many times have we seen that before, an, uh, a Kenyan being tracked by an Ethiopian in a long-distance race? Yeah, time and time again. This is Cannon Hill Park. The tight turns that uh, they're now undergoing, I wonder what uh, that will do to the the overall uh, times here, but uh, with two out on their own, I guess uh, the tight entrances that we saw yesterday when we went round the course uh, won't affect them too much at this stage. The five kilometer split told us that they were inside 65 minute pace, which is the fastest we've ever seen. If they keep this going, we'll get another check on 10, 10 kilometers, which, uh, will be down towards Bourneville where there's another very tight turn and that will be at mile six or thereabout. It's just about uh, nine, 9,600 metres in fact. But uh, this is the group that uh, is following. And remember, just to remind you, the first three times added together, lowest time will give the team uh, championship. Wonderful shots, these. I don't think we should get too excited about the pace, given that a lot of the race so far has been downhill, and that certainly the 10-kilometre point to which you're referring to, Stuart, comes uh, during quite a punishing hill, which is uh, yet to come. looking at uh, the relentless pace being set by these two athletes. They have a fair uphill pace to go and remember the start is downhill so that was uh, pretty emphatic. Look, Katan is moving to the side and says right, now it's your turn to have a go and uh, Kabeda does just that and then drops back again into the slipstream of the Kenyan.
deep in concentration, Gatani. Taller figure of the Ethiopian Kabeda. Just, just so much, just sitting there, isn't she? I mean, and, and Katani was, was saying, come on, do some work. A little glance over the shoulder. Now, is that a telling glance over the shoulder from Katana, this, uh, from uh, the Kabeda? Just a little glance behind, just to check where the rest were. And uh, I guess they're about 100 yards behind, 100 metres behind, as you can see. That's uh, just not quite clear from that picture, but uh, they are well, well lost at the moment. Seven kilometres gone, 20 21, roughly 21, 26. We'll just uh, see what sort of time. 64, 39. That comes up onto our chart. So they're well inside. Then well inside 65-minute pace still. So that is astonishing at the moment. If they can keep this going. Well, I'm fairly sure they are slowing, and perhaps that's why Cabeda was looking round because she realised the pace. Uh, wasn't being kept up by Kartani, hence her wish for Kabeda to take the lead. And she was looking back to see if that gap was closing. Now, it was around 100 metres at 15, at uh, 5k, with a further similar distance uh, to the chasing, the best of the chasers, which included Amy Yoga Bedley of the United States. So each of these uh, teams will be looking for two more athletes. Just uh, Kenya have won this uh, event several times before. They won the previous two years, if I remember correctly. The world best is 66 minutes and 25 seconds, Lorna Kiplagat, and uh, that was in 2007. And that's a better look at the margin between them. It is a good 100 metres or so, isn't it, between the leading uh, pair. And I can't see them faltering here. They are too far out. But they've left a world-class field way, way behind. It may well be... A little bit of a drop-off pace there. It's, it's difficult to tell, but we will certainly, when we get the next, if we get another kilometre marker, we'll be able to give you a better indication. And Katani is saying, come on, Kabeda, let's get in here and do some work, because that may well be the difference at the end. Although Kabeda is saying, or she, is she saying, come alongside, let's run together? I don't know. There are one or two messages not being uh, adhered to. But the, 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 I mean, the speed they're going at is, is, is quite incredible, quite incredible. It looked there as if she was saying, you're getting too close to me. We've seen that before from, certainly for Bahani Adiri. Um, is she clipping her heels? Well, I think they are running side by side now. <laughs> Unless she does that, then Katani starts to move away again. It's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite interesting the way this uh, race is beginning to unfold, isn't it? Incidentally, Stuart Katani was one of the athletes involved in the uh, incident yesterday before the press conference where unfortunately she got stuck in a lift for about 50 minutes along with eight other people. And uh, she wasn't able to attend the press conference after that, quite understandably. Eight kilometres they've just gone through uh, there, Mark. Just looking at... Um, it's still very, very fast. We'll just... Um, it's, it's, it has slowed down now, and, uh, and we expected perhaps that... Uh, it's just under 66 now. Um, 65.50 approximately just at that over, last kilometre mark. So we can see the people behind. And, uh, I just wonder just whether this will be down to a sprint yet. finish or whether one of these two will really try to sort of get yeah. away. But 
the eight kilometre mile. This is quite a, a long stretch down uh, Pershaw Road, incidentally, the A441, heading down towards uh, Bourneville and uh, in the region of, or towards the region of Cotteridge. And uh, they'll, they're through five miles and heading towards six miles now beyond uh, nine kilometers we'll give you another rundown in a moment but there certainly has been a drop off in pace and i think that was noticeable this slightly downhill part here may well give them a, a chance to move away again against the clock Gatali won the, I was just looking down, she won the Lille half marathon twice in 2007 and again this year and that was when she set that uh, 67 minute uh, time and she paced the 2007 London marathon if you remember. She ran with the leaders until the 26 kilometre mark and she dropped out. She says by then, work done. So it's clear she's not afraid to run from the front and uh, incidentally her husband Charles Coach is a 61 minute half marathon runner, so I, I figure they must be the fastest husband and wife team in half marathon running. And of course. Well, this race is uh, unfolded very, very early. It's down to two, and it's Kenya versus Ethiopia. No surprises there, but the surprise has been the speed at which they've uh, run this race and the difference between. The leading group and the trailing pack has remained pretty constant. Well, we're heading now back to the start, where we've got, uh, of course, the men's race about to begin. Full teams from the Kenyans, very strong. The South Africans have got a strong side too. And there are one or two individuals, and I mentioned uh, Dathan Ritzenheim of the United States in very, very good form indeed, particularly after that uh, wonderful 10,000 metres. I think he was in Zurich uh, this last year. So given that this is the last world-level event... That and we'll we can uh, just Britain, hear the announcer in the background. the opening day of Athletics at London 2012, let's stand by and get ready to introduce... And welcome There's some of the a very, very famous fella in the middle. We'll, in I think we're going to see an introduction for him, Tedessa. There's an Tedessa of Eritrea. Just waiting for the introductions here. The officials just holding the athletes back as they approach the start line. Okay, stand by. We're going to introduce to you some of the biggest names in this lineup as we enter the final. I think we're going to meet uh, four of the athletes here. They're all ready to go. Representing Brazil, well, the first the New York City Marathon champion, Dos Santos, Santos of uh, Brazil, Santos. the first to be introduced uh, to the crowd, seventh in the World Half Marathon in 2007, eight last year. Three times the former champion. A man going for his fourth champion, title, the defending Zazane champion, Zazane Tedesi of Eritrea. More about him leading the British team, Phil Wicks, 62.51 is uh, best time, second in the Reading Marathon in March this year, and then Wilson Kipsang Kipratich of Kenya, sub-59 half marathon man in February this year, twice under 60 minutes this year, they just can't wait to get underway. Well, the evidence of the women's race thus far is that it's uh, pretty quick all round, uh, certainly in the early stages, but uh, certainly let me just tell you that Africa have dominated the men's event over the years with 15 wins, only two European winners over the years, Vincent Rousseau, Belgium, back in 1993, and then Stefano Boldini of Italy in 1996, the former Olympic uh, marathon champion. The team race has gone to Africa six 16 times with Kenya winning eight and they're going for their fourth team win in a row here in Birmingham Italy the only European team winners back in 1996 Zazane Tedessa of Eritrea as I've just said goes again 
looking to become the first athlete to win four and four consecutive times in this uh, world championship. He faces tough Kenyan opposition. Four have run under 60 minutes this year, and of the four, two have run sub-59. The silver, the man who's going out early, and it looks to me as though just attempting to feature in the early stages of this race. There are 34 men's teams, the world best 58-33, and that was Wanjiri of Kenya a couple of seasons ago. Oh, now we've got a break. A Katani is just beginning to move away from Kabeda. And that is significant now. So the on paper, Katani was the number one, and all of a sudden, Kabeda has dropped off the back, and uh, there is a freedom, a freedom of running that uh, Katani has not had right the way through. The uh, Ethiopian has stuck to her like glue all the way. They're 30 seconds ahead of the second major group, the third group, if you include Kabeda as being the second group now. But there they are, Ongori, Aruse, and Kilel. So Kenya, as expected, in the driving seat as far as the team event is concerned. And this is the most emphatic piece of running we've seen this season over the half marathon. There was a little bit of a drop-off. Um, when we last to join this race, but all of a sudden there's a new lease of life now in the legs of Katani because she knows now that she's dropped her main opponent. And it was the hill that did it, I think. Yeah, you're probably right, uh, Mark. But one woman dominating this race, she's just run away from the world's best by not just a, a small margin, by a significant margin. Well, the men, we don't expect that to sort out for some time, but we would expect once again, there are a couple, I just see from this helicopter shot, there are two away. The Zambian there, and uh, Maciel, we'll, we'll, sort, we'll sort out uh, his credentials in a moment. That looks like uh, Banda. It's not Banda, is it? Mashai, Mashai on the left, it's Mashai. But the silver of Brazil. And the rest just closing down, there's nothing in it, it's early days yet. See a couple of Brazilians up in that leading group, the Kenyans are all there. But uh, certainly, in terms of uh, the early lead, I don't think it's too significant at the moment. Sally on the left of the shot, the Zambian alongside the Silva, but the rest just uh, hanging in behind them and they'll be swallowed up. The Eritrean Tadesi is on the right on the curb, just as uh, on the right hand side and the leading row of athletes behind the two leaders. And uh, he'll be very content to sit there. Such an experienced athlete, and I made the point that uh, he's been so successful on the country. I'm a world cross country champion, of course, in Mombasa. And uh, he did so well in uh, the World Athletics Championships in 10,000 metres. And, of course, uh, on the roads, he's uh, going for his fourth consecutive win here. And uh, he is the man who will uh, challenge the, the Kenyans, who, when you look at their team, with only three to count, with four, if not five, under uh, 69 minutes, uh, sorry, yeah, under 59 minutes, I should say. Um, it is quite an incredible team, and one would expect them to feature eventually, but uh, clearly this is not the same tenor of race as we've seen in the uh, women's event just a little bit earlier. 
and they are being swallowed up as we expected. Uh, Badesi on the inside, just happy to sit there. These are the early days. I would expect the first kilometre to be quick. There is a significant downhill part to it. Then we'll see how it unfolds. A bit of collision there between the Eritreans. Yes, the Eritreans getting each other's way at the beginning. So, the silver still leading. The Brazilian. And they are beginning to spread out just a little bit at the moment. And we shall see, I would think, a group of athletes beginning to break away uh, from this leading group. Gatani then. A little look. Average kilometre, 3.06. Well, if our average is 3.06, then that's inside 66 uh, minutes. That certainly is. And she went through 10 kilometres in 31.05. That's quicker than Paula Radcliffe when she went through uh, that point, when she set the world best time, as opposed to the world record, world best time set on, a, on an aided course of 65 minutes 40 in 2003. So it looks like she's won the race. But there are the How team positions, Mark, just interrupting you for a moment on the screen at the moment with Kenya, Ethiopia, Japan and the United States as they line up. Looks like quite a close battle then between Japan and the United States for the bronze medal. But the further away Kaitani pulls from uh, Kabeda, the bigger that gap is for the Kenyan team as a whole. Well, De Silva, the leader there, the most di the distinguished uh, Brazilian is Dos Santos. I think that, is that Dos Santos on the right? I think it is. Yes, it is. On the right, in the blue and yellow strip, he's the second of the Brazilians there. He's been seventh and eighth in the last two championships. And all of a sudden, the pace is being uh, pushed along very, very strongly indeed. I mean, this uh, Kenyan quartet of Chibet, Kimotai, Kipratich, uh, Kip Yego and Kitwara is uh, very, very strong indeed. And one would expect three kilometres gone in 8.37. Well, that's uh, very, very quick indeed. That's well inside 58 uh, minutes. It's, uh, it's 60 minutes, is it? 60 minutes, 60 minutes. So not quite as frantic as the women's start, as, as you said, Stuart. Yes, just uh, just looking down at the, the the chart. That's right. It's just around about 60 minutes. Just coming down to uh, Bourneville and the big turn round as they go back uh, with uh, 39 minutes gone, as you can see on the clock. And all of a sudden, it is a lonely a lonely run by the. Kenyan, this downhill, as you can see by the tenor of this, uh, the Africa better, who's in second place at the moment. I mean, that's a big, big gap opened up all of a sudden here. Well, Katani is looking very, very comfortable indeed, and I think she'll get another. She'll have got another lease of life once uh, Kabeda had gone, because uh, Kabeda was really uh, pushing along. Now the Kenyan, this is the. Kenyan team, which is going to take the team title most definitely here with um, just look, uh, looking at uh, I can see um, oh, oh, and Panina, oh, fall, Panina Aruse, Panina Aruse, she slipped up on the turn there. Oh, that's a Russi, that's a shame. It is damp underfoot. Yeah, it was uh, Panina Aruse. Let's have a look again at this. Oh, that's a bad fall. That's a very, very bad fall. I don't know whether she trod on the line, the yellow line, the paint, and I hope someone comes along to assist her soon because she must be cut. That was a very, very bad fall indeed. It won't affect the team, I don't think, because there were three of them up there already. So 
Uh, the Kenyans still in uh, good order. You notice there were three Kenyans going round that corner, so two were left, so there are three in the first four. So the team event is theirs, uh, as, assuming that nothing else untoward happens. Let's just see for the moment what's happening with the men. Not a lot, there's a big, big group, and this was always promised to be a more competitive race, and it's proving to be just that. Well, it looks to be pretty steady, actually. This is a very different race to the, the women's race. They look to be very comfortable. Is that Ritzenheim on the right? It is. What side, sorry, buddy? Yes, it is, and, and how good he was over 10,000 metres, 4 kilometres, 11.35, 4 kilometres. So they're um, around about 61, 61 minutes or thereabouts. And Ritzenheim, coming into this uh, championship, we were told that he was in very good form indeed, and when he went to Zurich and uh, in the Golden League over 5,000 and set that 12.56-27, uh, that was uh, a significant performance. He's been training at altitude in Colorado, and uh, he said that, uh, you know, he feels his speed is almost as good as it is when I was uh, running the 12.56, and there's an air of confidence there. Segai is there. Kiwara is there of, of Kenya as well, the Eritrean defending champion on the left of your shot, two from the left. But uh, Ritzenheim is a good competitor now and that uh, run in uh, Zurich gave him a great deal of confidence and that moved him on in every respect, a class act. Tedessa on the left pushing along just a little bit, I just wonder when they'll start to push this pace on a little bit because it's absolutely different to the women's race. Now this time, I guess that indicates why there are so many there, Mark, at this particular point. But uh, I would expect there to be a significant move, although Ritzenheim is beginning to establish the tenor of the race. It looks as though he's pushing it along just a little bit. And that's good news. OK, that's fine, mate. You're quite right to refer to uh, his run in Zurich. In fact, ever since that run, he's been looking to do this event, so he's been gone back and uh, trained for it. He was hoping to run at perhaps a, a track 10,000, but there wasn't one at Brussels this year, so their loss is our gain in that uh, all his energies have, been, have gone into running one at this race. I was just looking at the team. Well, it's, it's too early to really in this particular race to establish a team situation but uh, certainly Eritrea have got three or four they've got three up in that leading group the Kenyans are there so it's Ethiopia Eritrea and Kenya at the moment in this uh, men's race looking at uh, five kilometers and that's a three mile marker just behind there that's three miles and the five kilometers will come up shortly as they go through this uh, park area this is uh, cannon hill park again one lap of the park and then out onto the road again kimatai on the right tedessa in the middle kiwara on the left these kenyans so talented when it comes to the times where we looked at their times, we said, well, hang on a moment. They've got four or five capable of running uh, 58 plus. Just got a glance there of the positions as they come. There's the... Well, there are the split times, as you can see. Well, they went through 5k in 14.27, which is around 61 minute pace. So the Kenyan men certainly are having very different tactics to their women. In fact, they're not leading at all. They're leading it to Dedessa. By the way, he's wearing a gold number, or his good numbers gold, because he's the defending champion. And in fact, he's never been beaten in a half marathon since 2003. Well, the great man has taken up the mantle once again. Odessa, beginning to push it along now. The caption you see is always going to be slightly out of date because of the way in which they are compiled. 
but you can see there are two gaps there and a third and now all of a sudden this is respectable pace they really are charging it along very very strongly indeed Very so tight in the, st the team standings, as as uh, Stuart predicted. But of course, it is early days, and they're in a big group. Five teams there, and very close together. Yep, this is certainly now a push along. Kimatai, Kipratic, Kipiego, Kitwara, Kitwara on the left of your shot, just uh, down a little bit on the Eritrea. Very, very good race this is going to be in the final stage. Ritzenheim is still there, is in about sixth. But second place in the women's race, Kabedia of uh, Ethiopia. And uh, all alone, as she has been for the last, uh, what? Must be 10 minutes or so since the break came. 15 kilometers, 14, 14, uh, sorry, 46.51 at 15 kilometers. I'll work that out for you. Katani, relentless, took it on right at the start. It was a very, very big, big push early on in the race. Totally different to the men. The men's is beginning to wind up now, and the women's. Well, it was always, for the last uh, third of the race, a one-athlete race. Well, Stuart, 46 minutes, 51 seconds, it's inside the official world record for 15 kilometres. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's inside 66. And, of course, her personal best is out 66. There, it's outside 66. There's Kabedi, 40 seconds down on Katani. And that happened so suddenly. All of a sudden, Kabedi um, just dropped away. She's only 20. She's got a best of 68.43 coming into this race, so she must have believed that she could challenge but that's a big big margin of advantage isn't it big big margin Kilel and Ongori the two Kenyans so that uh, with three to count then the Kenyans have got this in the bag unless anything happens to one of those three and the Ethiopians are bunching in the trailing group 40 seconds Well, this is becoming a very interesting race indeed. Ritzenheim on the left of the shot, Tedessa now leading. And uh, Tedessa, the defending champion, going for his fourth championship, former world cross-country champion, began uh, his career as a cyclist, wanted to be a world-class cyclist, couldn't make that. And that wasn't because he wasn't capable, it was the situations never existed in Eritrea to allow him to do that. But uh, certainly, he is one of the greats. But having said that, he does consider that background in cycling, where he got all that early training, um, important to his development as an athlete. You know, he only began running seriously in 2002. And uh, look what's happened since then. series of brilliant performances you know over 10 kilometers to half marathon three consecutive world titles we've said that and uh, he really has got so much experience and when you look at the Kenyan team Mark it's a different team that we've seen before there are quite a few new names there <clears throat> and Kitwara the Kenyan number one who you can see there running beside Tedese. It was the guy who actually won the Kenyan trials at 10,000 metres this year, but then was dropped from the team for the World Championships. Ah, oh, look, there's the crossover point. So we're round about between 16, 17 and 18 kilometres along Pershaw Road, and that's the point at which they, they uh, see each other. The women going one way, the men going one way. We'll see Kabeda in a moment, I think. I don't think we've missed her. She was 40 seconds down. As, there she goes. There she goes at the top of the men. So that's the point. Uh, the men 
between or moving towards seven kilometers third and fourth in the women's so an interesting part that's the only part of the course where you can see them uh, going both ways Kiwara Kitwara looks very comfortable indeed and I guess if anything this could be the toughest race that Tedes has got uh, really when you look at uh, the quality here Kitwara a best of 58 58 and the important thing is it's a this year time he won the Kenyan 10,000 meters their trial selected for the world championships then dropped out of the team without uh, and he, after he competed without permission so he got withdrawn from the team so that's an unfortunate one he's unbeaten in 2009 outside of the cross-country season so that's the sort of problem that the Eritrean has got this time to Desi. Yes, Kitwara was telling me about that episode, but there's no hard feelings now between him and the Kenyan Federation. He inadvertently, I, I understand, uh, raced without permission at uh, a 10-kilometer road race in the United States after having won the Kenyan trials at 10,000 meters. He was dropped from the Kenyan team at 10,000 meters. But now we're going to see, you know, perhaps what might have been had he been in in that race, along with uh, Tedesa and Kenanis Bacani. Agassa, all having a little chat. Very, very solid piece of uh, concentrated running. Ritzenheim is still in there amongst the Africans to gain so much confidence and uh, really he could uh, make an impact here, he really could. The time's still within his compass. I've got him down as a best of 61.25 back in 2006. Gory, third place in the women's race. So uh, with 52 58 gone. So let's just see how far behind second place uh, Kabedi she is. It's significant, isn't it? Let's have a look at this. The margins have opened up dramatically. Well, there it is. That's, that's, that's a big, big margin. But uh, these athletes are all out on their own. There's going to be no keenly contested finish here. Brilliant piece of running by uh, Kabedi early on. She tried desperately to stay with Katani, but just couldn't handle it in the final stages. She's only 20. She's got a lot to learn. Stay with us. Stay with So that's the team situation at 15 kilometers, Kenya, Ethiopia, Japan and Russia. 17 kilometers just passed, so down Pershaw Road, heading towards the 11th mile and 18 kilometers into Sherlock Street and Pershaw Street and heading then back towards the finish after 21 kilometers of running, 13.1 miles. Tedesi, look at the difference between the Kitwara and Tedesi. Tedesi always looked a little laboured when he runs, but uh, there's a lot of miles in those legs. But uh, this is a Kenyan versus Eritrean battle with one American. One American and a good American in Dathan Rittenheim. Sitting in there. Happy to sit there, took the lead for a while. But that is the group from which the first three will come. This 18th World Championship. Kimatai in the middle. Kitwara on the right. Tedesi on the left. Chebe on the left there. You can see their names on their vests. This is the deep in concentration part. I just wonder what goes through the mind here. 
It's about a feeling. It's about feeling good. It's about knowing that you've been there before. As far as Kitwara is concerned, not been beaten this season. The Eritrean going for a little bit of athletics history and a fourth win. Two women have won three times. Kiplagat and uh, a very, very good Briton over the years, Paula Radcliffe. And of course, this is a real effort now. You can just see that uh, the conditions, not that good at the moment. It's a just slight drips of rain early on when I walked out of the commentary box. But Katani now has steadied down. It looks as though she's steadied down. And I'm not surprised. I mean, the, the, the speed at which she was going early on, just incredible. Uh, just looking there. There's the 18 kilometer mark uh. Well, I think we're looking at one of the greatest ever runs by a woman at a half Well, one of the greatest ever runs by a woman period She went through 10k five seconds ahead of the world record She 15k eight seconds ahead of the world record pace in a time which if confirmed would be a, a world record for 15 kilometers in itself So the next figures we're looking for at 20k 65 27 that was the time that Lorna Kiplagat set when she broke the world record, the official world record on a uh, legitimate course, 66.25. They're the figures that she'll be looking at. She's won the race. She's won the team race for uh, uh, her country by the margin by which she's ahead and also the fast pace she's set. And uh, I just wonder why was she so at that 3.7 well, average kilometre. 307 average uh, a kilometer is is still very very quick it really is well I make that if on the average of uh, 307 it's got to be just inside 66 it has to be on that uh, on those averages now then here's the first break and Rittenheim's gone with them this is Eritrean and this is the hill and this is the part at which uh, Katani got away from Kabeda. Well, Tedessa there, Rittenheim is there. Segai of Ethiopia also there. Haven't got a performance for half marathon for him. He's at 64 minutes at uh, half marathon. There it is, 28.30 at 10K. So Mark will uh, work that out for us. 60, just outside 60 minutes, isn't it? So it's just outside the one hour. And you're right, we haven't got a performance for Sege, but there is one interesting statistic about him. He is a training partner of Tedessa, so that speaks for itself, really, if he can run with that, that sort of level of competitor. Well, this is a real attack by the United States on Africa, but uh, Africa has dominated the women's race. And there she is. Totally and utterly a lonely vigil in this race. A long, long time. She had a wonderful battle with uh, Kabedi of uh, Ethiopia, who's a 68-43 athlete. And uh, she tried to stay with Katani. But in the end, it was down to a very, very talented athlete who came here with the best time of 67 minutes. She's obviously slowed down now, as you can see. But uh, it's still a very, very fine performance. She's a, well, the watch is there. She knows what she's doing. She knows what sort of time. Now then, Tedesi. Tedesi is leading. Is that Segai in second place? Then Ritzenheim in third place. So Eritrea. And the Kenyans, there are a couple of Kenyans dropping off the back of that uh, group there, although there are three Kenyans in that group, so there's one Eritrean missing as far as the team event is concerned. They need three. And I think I can see one in the background. I think I can see an Eritrean vest, but... Uh, oh, it may not be. But certainly Tedessa 
has really put down the pedal. There it is, the team at 10K, Kenya, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Africa through and through, as it's been in the men's events over the years. Only one European team has ever won this, the Italians, back in the early days. Well, the three broken away now, but the Kenyans have got three men in that uh, leading group. It's going to be very, very close indeed, and here goes Tedesi away. Ritzenheim in third place, Segai in second place. 11 kilometers gone. Third place in the women's race. Angori. Second place right in the middle. I'm just looking to see how second and third are faring actually at the moment but Ongori looks as though she was catching um, Kabeda and I thought there might be a chance of that happening actually because Kabeda was really all of a sudden dropped off and uh, from what five seconds ten seconds to 40 seconds below a bit behind oh and there it is you can see um, that there is a closing down and that's uh, going to mean that uh, Ongori of Kenya I think will catch Eighth place in the world, 10,000 in 2007, just to give you one statistic of her, and she's coming up to the shoulder of Kabeda now, so it's going to be Kenya one and two shortly. Just sitting in there for the moment, but the early pace that uh, Habaru Kabeda of Ethiopia ran, trying to stay with Katani, is really taking its toll. There it is, second place and third place changing. Ongori now moves into second, Kabeda in third. But this uh, is the final stages now for Katani, and it is a wonderful run, it really is. It's a very difficult part, this 20 kilometers gone. 62.59. 62.59, she's just two seconds outside the official world record there, so she's two seconds behind the pace that Lorna Kiplagat set when she broke the world record. She might just miss it. Yeah, and uh, she probably won't know it's that close, but uh, certainly in the final stages of this race, she's beginning to grimace just a little bit. I'm not surprised with the two-thirds of the race. She was really powering along and well inside uh, world record pace. I remember, 64 and a half minutes at one stage, uh, which was uh, quite incredible. And that's the sort of pace that Kabede, uh, she was running four minutes inside herself, inside her personal best, that's where she was taken apart, really. And now, uh, of course, uh, Ongori has moved into second place. But it's a long, long way behind. Katani down that uh, downhill part under the road and out. And Oh, look at this! A fight back for Kabeda. We've got a real battle on for second place. Kabeda's now moved back into second place. Ongori of Kenya in third place now. So we've got a real race on for second and third. And Kabeda, a new lease of life as soon as uh, Ongori came up onto her shoulder. But this uh, uphill piece here may well uh, be the reason that, that the record is, uh, is lost, but uh, we'll see. Absolutely a wonderful piece of demonstration here in this 18th World Half Marathon Championship. Brilliant, brilliant run by Mary Katani of Kenya. She's their record holder. She is a prolific runner, and I just wonder, she's, uh, what, how old is she? 27 now. Looking very, very tired now, and I am not surprised. It was a very, very strange race early on, where they, the group of Kenyans and the Ethiopians moved away. But this is the second and third battle, and it's... Uh, Ongori now is, what, about five or six metres behind Kabeda. And so it looks as though Kabeda had another lease of life. 
But look at this, he's receiving the applause of the crowd. You can see it's just beginning to rain. It's been raining for some time, coming down towards the finish now. And it's going to be very, very quick indeed. 65, 37, 38, watch the clock. Remember, well inside 65 minutes at one stage in this race. The tight turns and the loneliness of running and the speed of that early pace. The world record 66 minutes and 25. 66 25 is the target that she's looking for. Now you heard a cry of 200 yards to go and uh, look at the clock. She's going to be very, very close indeed to that world best. 14, 15, she's got 10 seconds to get through that tape. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, she's just going to miss it. She's just going to miss it. There's the, there's the title. She's going to miss it by just a few seconds. But that, uh, an absolutely superb performance. It's still brilliant. Brilliant performance. Brilliant performance. So close to the fastest in the world, and it may have been uh, just a little bit too quick in the early stages. It's certainly the first third of the race, where she was well under 65-minute pace, but that's brilliant. Now then, here we go. It's uh, going to be a sprint finish between Ongori on the left and Kabeda. Cabeda and Ongori, look at the teeth being gritted here. There's a real battle on who's got the finish after 21 kilometers, 13.1 miles. Who will prevail? Who will come second? Ongori of Kenya versus Cabeda of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian green vest. And I think there's still more left in the tank as far as the Ethiopian's concerned, and she's coming past again. It's a brilliant finish. Look at this. Has Ongori finished or will she come back? It's going to be Ongori and well, Ongori comes back. It's one way, then the other, and I think Ongori's got it. Ongori gets second. She wins the battle in third place. It's Kabeda. What a good race indeed. Ongori prevailed in the end, but that was a brilliant, brilliant race for the second and third place. So the team event in fourth place. And this is Bilela Kenya, and this is going to take the world team title for Kenya as well. So two individual medals. Chef Tanui coming in to take the fourth and the team title. And that is absolutely superb. Brilliant, brilliant race for the women. It really was. Oh, Tadessa's away. And Ritzenheim in second place. So it's the American between the two Eritreans. And that is a very big break indeed. Wow. And all of a sudden, no Kenyan in sight. Who would have thought that? But remember, it's three to count. There's one Eritrean missing. There are two Americans missing. I would think that the, all the Kenyans are in the background, and if they've got three there, well, that's going to be enough, I think. I don't think there's an Eritrean close enough, but this could be, and looks as though it's going to be, a moment of athletics history. It's early days, but this is a big, big break, and this is a man who knows what he's doing. He knows, he sat there early on, and uh, all of a sudden he's built it and built it and built it. There was nothing early. He let the Brazilians go away. And uh, De Silva and Dos Santos, he let them re lead. He then slowly built up. And, of course, the Kenyans who promised so much here. Kitwara, nowhere to be seen. I think he may well be about 100 metres behind here. He's the man unbeaten. But today he's come up against a man who is so experienced and desperately wanted this fourth title because no one else has done it. No one else in the 18th running of this particular event. But this is a brilliant run, Mark, by Ritzenheim. It really is. Well, it is. And when you consider the United States have never won a single medal in these championships, men, women or team. But this is the guy that knows all about uh, running half marathon races. And uh, he was bronze medalist in the World Cross Country in March, silver medalist on the track at 10,000 metres behind Bekele in Berlin. And now will he win the gold?
Well to Dessa. He is pushing this now. It's so different to the way in which the women ran their race. They went hard and uh, then in the final stages just uh, the pace slowed and I'm not surprised when you're you know well within the we were almost two minutes inside the world record pace. But this is a man who knows how to run. Ritzenheim and Sege, the Eritrean, there's five seconds only between them. The downhill part now giving an opportunity to get away. We're just looking at the... I think that was the ninth mile. We're looking at the, the markers. We'll come up against the kilometre markers very shortly. A little glance behind him. This is a fella who really has achieved so much. Coached by Geronimo Bravo. His brother, incident is a fine athlete as well. He uh, competed in the World uh, Cross Country Challenge. He was 56, that's his younger brother. And his younger brother was the 21st of the junior race, so it's very much a family affair, you know. Well, the margin is growing, and it's about Segai versus Ritzenheim for the second place at the moment. Kipiego and Kipratic there, look, there are two Kenyans, two, ah, three Kenyans, and that's what gives them the advantage. 15 kilometres. They're coming out of Bournebrook, they're going towards uh, Pershaw Road, where they'll... Uh, They're on 59 minute, 32 second schedule at the moment, or at least this man is, the leader. There's the second place battle. I just wonder whether Dathan Ritzenheim's losing a little bit on the Eritrean, I don't think so. Holding his uh, form at the moment. Looking desperately to get back onto the shoulder of the Eritrean, Segei. And he's doing, I think he's making up a little bit of ground as he gets uh, up to him and it'll be a little bit easier if he can, he's running his own uh, line at the moment. That's Segei. And Tedes has just completed a, a 5k section in 1350 which was preceded by 1403 and 1427. So he's doing the same sort of thing as he did in Berlin when he burnt off all but the great Kenneth Bekele in mid-race in the 10,000 metres. Yeah, I remember that uh, Bekele versus uh, Tedeschi uh, World Cross Country in Mombasa. And Ritzenheim has gone past into second place. As Sege moves behind him. Now that, uh, that does say a lot about the confidence of the American, it really does. He said he felt good and, uh, well, he's proving it at the moment. Still some way to go, but uh, I wonder if he can get away from Sege. If he could, then that would be most significant. And he looks as though he is making some headway. Sege, he's got a 13, 16, 59, 5,000 on the track this season, just to give you some idea. And Sege's only 20, so he's not that experienced. He won the Eritrean half marathon in 64 minutes, but that was at altitude. But Ritzenheim now is looking very, very good. Very, very comfortable indeed. If there is such a thing in a half marathon. Well, the concentration there's the team event Kenya by virtue of the fact that they've got three athletes in that leading uh, the leading part of the race I say that because 
Eritrea. And uh, they've got a one and a three, and the Americans have got two. And the Kenyans are behind them as a group of three. But I would expect, to Desi, I would have thought, would have expected a, a bit more from the uh, Kenyan quartet, really, when you think that uh, all of them have run 59 under 60 and the sub-59, two of them, so... Fourth and fifth, Kip Yego, and Kip... Just looking... Oh, Kip... Yes, it is. It's, is that Kip Yego? It, it's Kipratich. Oh, Kipratich it is. Yes, it is. There, we can read it a bit better now on our screens. Yes. Kipiego, Kipratich. Let's have a look at the distance between them. Ah, there's uh, Segei. Now, they're closing in on Segei. And there's another Kenyan behind the two Kenyans that gives them the advantage in the team race, but way back in the distance. And uh, uh, Dathan Rittenhine really going very, very well indeed. Looks comfortable, one has to say, in second place. Looks very, very comfortable indeed. There were those that said he might make an impact here. And the very nature, the tenor of this race, has helped him to get into it, really. It was steady early on, and then all of a sudden, um, Tedesi uh, put the pedal down and moved away. In some ways, an ungainly gait. He doesn't look entirely comfortable, but it's workmanlike. It's, it's the way in which he just grinds out the miles. And now it's uh, Tedesi against the clock. He's absolutely taken the rest apart. Well, when you look at the distance, Ritzenheim is uh, running very, very well, you know, when you consider the quality of the man in front. It's got to be... Oh, there's 17 kilometres, 47.50. Um, 17 kilometres. Just give you a, a time on that in a moment. 59.21 is our, the prediction on the computer for that. Well, there's, there's Ritzenheim second, Segai in third. Then you've got the two Kenyans. And there's a third Kenyan behind those two Kenyans, but he's way behind. And it should well, it could well be Kitwara, who was the who was the favourite on the the Kenyan side, really. Kipiego, Kipratic, and uh, Kipiego now looking to go past Segai, as you can see, and to take third place behind Rittenheim. But all of a sudden, Segai just puts his pedal down again and tries to stay in. So Kipiego is there. Kipratic is behind. Well, I, now there'll be a big, big run now from uh, Kipiego uh, to chase in on uh, Dathan uh, Ritzenhain. And Kipiego was uh, fifth in that World Championship uh, 10,000 metres, one position ahead of Dathan Ritzenheim, so he must know that uh, he's good enough to be with Ritzenheim. So just look, uh, Ritzenheim running his own uh, line indeed, and now he's being under pressure, really, from Segai and uh, from Kip Yego. So it looks as though uh, Segai has uh, risen to the challenge, and Ritz, uh, come on Ritz, someone says from the side, and he's now back in fourth place, but he may respond too. A little glance across to see who's there. 11 miles gone. That was the 11-mile marker. Segai is there. Uh, Kip Yego in second place now. This will help uh, Nathan, uh, Dathan Rittenheim. It really will because he can now sit in. If he can hold on to that group, then he could challenge the Africans. Look at the masses. This is a day for the masses as well. We've uh, concentrated on the elite, but uh, there are thousands upon thousands here in Birmingham. 
12,000 competitors in the mass race. There's a real battle on for these places in this uh, men's race, you've seen that. But this is the leader going through 18 kilometres, 50-48. 18 kilometres, and that means that he's heading towards Sherlock Street, he's on Pershaw Road. He'll head towards the 19th kilometre, remember 21 kilometres the race, 51 minutes gone. And he's on schedule for 59 or thereabouts, just outside 59 minutes. Well, Dathan Ritzenhain sits in. He's the man to challenge. Seca is there and just looking behind Kipritich. Now, Kipritich might be a factor as well in the final stage, but this is the real race, isn't it? Because one man is out. So Segai, Kiprot, Ritzenhain and Kipritich. That's how it is. Kipiego, as you said, 59 minutes and 10 set a personal best this season. That's much quicker than uh, Dathan Ritzenhain. But there you've got it, Sergei, Kipiego and Ritzenhain. Kiprot looks uh, very, very comfortable, doesn't he? Sergei will have uh, taken up the challenge. He was caught by uh, Kip Yego. He could have uh, allowed him to get away, but he didn't. He fought on, and I have to say, there's a great deal of character being shown here by the American. Rittenhine is sitting in there, not letting him go. Looks fairly comfortable. Difficult to tell. This is just an unbelievable run by Ritzenheim, really. Segai, Kip Yego. Kip Yego now moving away. Now this is a significant part of the race, really, because uh, this is where the places are going to be sorted out. I know that Ritzenheim's got to finish, and I just wonder how good that's going to be against uh, these very good Kenyan and an Eritrean. Still looks good. Kip Yego, remember one place between them in that 10,000. They know each other, they know what each other can do. And Ritzenheim was one of those unfortunate athletes that was stuck in a lift for an hour yesterday, but he took it all in good humour. The only problem was, obviously, we didn't have a chance to speak to him at the press conference, but he's been threatening to run well at a longer distance like this ever since that Zurich 5,000 metres breakthrough when he broke the North American record for that distance. But well, it's Eritrea 1 and 2 at the moment, Kenya 3, USA 4, Kenya 5. The rest not in the picture. There may well be, and I would have a feeling there's a third Kenyan lurking around that corner we just had a brief bl glimpse of. It was uh, given the team title, remember, three to score. Times added together not places. Well, there's the man leading. Zazane Tadesi of, e of Eritrea. The defending champion won it three times. I'll say it again because this could be and will be, I would think, a moment of athletics history. Third in the world cross country. Look at the time, 54, and there's the mile marker. I would think that's the 12 mile marker, I would think. Well, he's operating at about 59 minutes 30 pace. He's getting to be getting quicker. And he, it, this guy is a huge star in his country, Eritrea. And when he's, he says when he runs, he runs with the whole of Eritrea with him. And they will be absolutely thrilled, not only with him so far in front, but also Sergei, his training partner in second place, and Eritrea right up there with the team medals. Well, look at this. Sega is getting away. Kiprops now in uh, third place. Ritzenheim in fourth place. Kipritich in fifth. And it's all of a sudden it's a break. And Sega, a new lease of life towards the final stages. But uh, is Ritzenheim finished? Is Kiprop finished? Have they got a sprint finished towards the final stages? There's a gap of about 20 meters now. It's Eritrea one and two. Kenyu came here as the favourites, may well win the team, but my goodness me, their top man has been beaten here today, Kitwara.
So, Ritzenheim now moving into third place. He's on the rostrum if he can hold this. Final stage is now. And he's determined to get onto the rostrum. Segai is away in second place. Ritzenheim third, Kiprot fourth. Now then, what's Kip, Kip Yego, I should say? What's Kip Yego got? Who's got the finish? Uh, three minutes from seeing the race leader coming to the finishing straight. Got about three minutes of running to go, I would think, and to Desi. Looking very, very strong. 20 kilometers, 56 24. Fifty-six twenty-four. So, one kilometre to go. One thousand metres. He's well into that thousand metres now. Watch the clock ticking down. Let's just catch up on uh, second place if we can in a moment. That Segay is twenty seconds down now. Now let's get a clue as to where uh, Kip Yego twenty-four and Ritzenheim twenty-five. That may not be the case. They're all slightly out of date. Kipratich is the fifth place, uh, 29 seconds down. So it's Dessa's gone 1427, 1403, 1350 and 1404 for the four 5k sections so far. Broke them with that third uh, 5k section between 10 and 15. Yep, he did indeed. Oh, look at this. This is a very, very good battle, and I just wonder, this is for second and third, and there are three for two places. Ritzenheim now moving up on Segei again. As they go under the bridge, Ritzenheim moves very, very quickly into second place again. As they come out of the tunnel, let's see who's prevailing at the moment. Ritzenheim it is. He's getting away. He's coming up the hill now. This is where, look at the grimace on his face. Watch this man. He really has a finish. But has he got a good enough finish? Segei, I think he's spent. He tried to go too early, couldn't sustain it. And now it looks to me Rittenheim is coming into second place. Can he hold off Kip Yego? Kip Yego sitting in there comfortably at the moment. But Tedessa, of course, is the man. This is for second and third. That's where the real race is. Tedessa. And he's so far ahead of the rest of the field. It's going to be a fourth win, a fourth consecutive win, a piece of history in athletics. Brilliant, brilliant stuff at the moment. The battle for second and third, and there's going to be a medal for Ritzenheim, but what colour is it? Kip Yego, these two in sprinting mode at the moment. Kip Yego digging in deep. Tedessa heading towards the finish, all the way now this man, a brilliant, brilliant demonstration as the second and third place has come round the, into the home straight, and a big smile all of a sudden on the face of the man who defends his title, four consecutive world half marathon titles to Zazene Tedessa of Eritrea, brilliant, brilliant tactician here. He controlled the race, sat in early on, controlled it, and then, when it mattered, ran away with it. Put down the pedal, slowly moved away, and then introduced a pace with which the others couldn't cope. So, fourth consecutive win then for Zezene Tedesi of Eritrea, and this battle for the silver medal for second place. Kip Yego, I think, is going to take it. Kip Yego's going to take second place. And Ritzenheim first. Kip Yego, there's not far enough to go. Kip Yego comes through. Ritzenheim behind him. Kip Yego is second. Ritzenheim is third. The first American on the rostrum. Brilliant run once again, just as he ran in Zurich. Another brilliant run. Absolutely superb. Now Kipratic and the other Kenyans coming through. Mark, what a race that was. Absolute beautiful race. And the Americans will be thrilled at Nathan Ritzenheim's bronze medal. The first ever medal won in the World Half Marathon Championships by an athlete from the United States. But Africa once again dominate in terms of winning these races. Tedesi has got his support here. And it really was a brilliant, brilliant run indeed.
Kipiego just had the legs on uh, Rittenheim for the second and third place, but it was a brilliant run all round. Segei, he performed well too, ended up in fourth place, and then the Kenyans came in, and I think there were three Kenyans through which would have taken the team title. But this, the conditions, it was cool, just a slight breeze as you can see. Fairly high cloud, conditions pretty good, and the course proved to be fast. It had lots of tight turns, but uh, it, that did not slow them down, particularly the women. That was a tactical run by Tedesi in the early stages, coming through very, very strongly. And what a run by Dathan Rittenheim. Personal best. 60 minutes. Well, the big crowd around this finish celebrating what was a terrific race. <laughs> a man who wanted to be a cyclist has come to running, and whilst he couldn't dominate the world in cycling, he has done so in running. A half marathon of sheer brilliance. Just have a look at the final stages once again. The Desi, four wins and four consecutive wins in this World Half Marathon Championship. First person to do that, male or female. I guess when you look back at the start list, you thought he might be pressured by the Kenyans, and I guess, according to the statistics, of course, he should have been, with so many sub-60 uh, Kenyans in that team, but they, they obviously, I think they may well have won that uh, team race. They had three men in that uh, leading group of uh, athletes. The Eritreans just lacked a third man. Yes, Stuart, the uh, Kenyans in second, fourth, sixth. And uh, an unusual result there. You might have seen Stephen McArthur of South Africa came through quite well for eighth place. It's a big improvement for him, 61 minutes 36. And he defeated uh, Sammy Kitwara, the Kenyan who was, uh, well, possibly the second favourite for the race after Tedessa. He didn't even score for the Kenyan team in the end, but they'll get a gold medal along with the, uh, the, the guys that did score. Great, great atmosphere here. The crowds have come out on Sunday morning to celebrate that moment of athletics history. There's always great support for the uh, Eritreans when they run. We've seen it before in the cross country in Edinburgh. And in fact, uh, when Tedesi arrived in London, he had a reception. He had a reception dinner with the Ethiopian community in London, and they travelled up to support him. It's Mark Miles finishing. His wife also competed in the women's race for Great Britain. I know that the British team were looking for a top eight finish as a team. Whether they've achieved that, Spencer Barden had a chat with him yesterday in front of their home crowd. There's Bill Wicks coming in. The most experienced of the uh, British runners here today. We can confirm the results of the team competition. First, Kenya. Second, Eric Ryer. And there were only... Well, Jones of Great Britain and, you know, the British team all in, I think. They've had three in, they certainly have. I don't think they finished in the top eight. Uh, the women, though, were uh, seventh, including Gemma Miles, who I just mentioned, the wife of Mark Miles. Uh, looking at the team standings, there were only, as I think you might have heard the announcer just say, uh, eight seconds between third and fourth place, Ethiopia third and United States fourth.
We will bring you up to date with the result in a moment when we can. And uh, the finish, they'll still be coming in for some considerable time. And then, of course, the masses, the 12,000 that began this, there will be um, individual times. Their stopwatches will be running. And they'll all get, uh, they've got the little transponders on and they will get time. And of course, some will be running for themselves, some will be club athletes, and most will be people who are running for the very first time. And the British, British women have placed seventh. Claire Hallisey, 25th, 72-14. Michelle Roscope, 34th, 73-50. Gemma Miles, 44th, 74-56. And they were the three scorers, and the two non-scorers were 45th Alison Dixon, 75-19, and 46th Rebecca Robinson, 66, sorry, 76-21. Yeah, forgive us for giving our home team results there because uh, in front of their home crowd. However, well, there is the result of the women's race. Uh, Katani, Mary Katani, 66-36, championship record it was, just outside the world record. Ongori of Kenya in second with a personal best. Kabedi of Ethiopia, personal best, 67-39. Stayed with Katania for a long, long time. Then Kilel of Kenya, another personal best. Look at all those personal best. Tufa, Segei, Smith. That's Kimberly Smith, the New Zealander, 69-35, a national New Zealand national record. How well she ran in the World Cross Country, how well she's run here, just ahead of Daniel of Kenya. There it is, a bit over of Russia. We featured uh, Sports Over at the beginning. She got a 69.56. That's her season's best, a big season's best there. The Japanese, Nakamura and Kizaki, running quite well there. And just there's another Kenyan, Aruse there. Now, Aruse fell, didn't she? She came in in 19th in the end. Very, you saw her fall in the race. And there's uh, Halisey, uh, 25th place. She won the British trial in uh, Bristol, and she came 25th. It's Michelle Ross Cope, just to update the British performances there. The Westling of the United States in uh, 38th place. Then the British, three more British athletes there, and Dreyer of the United States. A couple of Peruvians at the top of the picture, one Italian. Just looking down uh, the list, national records. Personal best for Liu of China. With, um, 124.29. Well, there's the team standing. Kenya, uh, 3.22.30. That's the top three times added together. Ethiopia in second place. How they how they charged off at the beginning, didn't they? Russia in third, 3.31.23. We thought that the Russians might be the European side to challenge the African dominance. Then Japan and the United States in fifth, South Africa sixth, then Great Britain and Northern Ireland in seventh place. Mexico and Peru in eighth and ninth. A very fine performance by the Kenyans. just uh, beginning to disperse, although there are still an awful lot of people to come through this finish line. Remember, we've got a glimpse of the 12,000, the masses coming through um, behind the elite athletes. There'll be still one or two elite uh, athletes. Um, I think the delay on uh, the start list, or rather the timings on the results, just have to wait a little while until we get uh, all the athletes through.
Well, there you've got the result of the men's race. Tadesi, 59-35. Championship record, incidentally, in his fourth consecutive win. And Kip Yego, 59-59. And Ritzenhain, a personal best, exactly 60 minutes, one hour. Ahead of Kipritic, Segei, Chebet, Kimatai and Makoka. They're the top eight.